Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis, and this evening we have one of our favorite guests on. We have Mr. Eric Harp, our certified professional fitness trainer and educator. And of course, he is here to talk to us about fitness and balance, which is very important during this holiday season. But first, you know how we do it. We talk about current topics and we have a lot to cover. But good evening, yes, Mr. Herb. How do. are you? Thank you for having me once again, Mrs. Davis. It's always a pleasure to be with you. I'm doing it, very well around this holiday time. How about you? I am great. It is great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get right to it. At the top of our list is Gaza. And I'm not smiling because this is a, a a good topic. I'm smiling because there is so much to talk about here. So many different layers. So help break it down for us, Mr. Hart. What's going on in Gaza right now well, with the war? Well, to be, to be as time efficient as possible, it's a horror show. Yes. It's a horror show. Mm-hmm. Now we've talked about this before. This is this is a uh, this is generations generational mm-hmm. war. They've been going at it for a long time, mm-hmm. but now we got cameras everywhere. Cameras everywhere. Yeah, to record almost everything. Mm-hmm. And here in this country, we hear about the plights of the Jews, and we've heard through history the plights of the Jews, and it garners a lot of sympathy, garners mm-hmm. a lot of pulls on the heartstrings. Mm-hmm. They aren't the only people to be persecuted around the world, of course. But uh, yeah. here in America, their story really resonates. Mm-hmm. Now they're in a war, and we're seeing how some of the how some of the Jews are really acting. Now around the world, you got America, um, especially President Biden, and many leaders mm-hmm. around the world asking Israel to chill for a minute, mm-hmm. relax, just right. for a minute, ceasefire. So mm-hmm. we can get some aid to the people who need aid. These hospitals are just torn down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need to get we need to get gasoline and oil to the places because they don't. Hey, they're running on gas and oil. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what what Israel is attempting to do is to just starve people out. Right. Even their own. Mm-hmm. Starve them out. Mm-hmm. And. Listen, I watch the same news programs that I'm sure many of your watchers watch. Mm-hmm. And I listen to the words and I hear the words eradicate. I, I hear the word eradicate 20 times in a paragraph mm-hmm. coming from the Jews, coming from the mm-hmm. Israel mm-hmm. idea. Mm-hmm. Now they talk about. I watch the same news programs that your watchers watch and all of these news programs you hear them use the words eradicate eradicate exterminate and that means to kill them kill every last one of them Mm -hmm. wipe them off the face of this earth Mm -hmm. now if if i'm not wrong it wasn't just the mission that the jews were under when the germans tried to eradicate and exterminate Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is just, this doesn't, this doesn't seem right. Okay. Now, just recently, you got three young men who escaped or freed, however they got away, Mm -hmm. but they got away. Mm -hmm. They got away and had a makeshift surrender flag and were gunned down. Mm -hmm. Then we see, I saw it. There's a video that's floating around on all the national news programs of Israeli soldiers walking up to a man at a truck and just gun button him, hitting him in the head with the back of the gun, and then he's on the ground and they're kicking him. Mm-hmm. Now, this is not rules of engagement. Not at all. These are what we call war crimes. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll see how it all pans out in the end. However, these are not some of the things that we need to be seeing. And and trying to assist the mm-hmm. the Israelites in eradicating a, a race of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's what's going on right now. They're trying to flood the tunnels. They're trying to flood the tunnels with seawater because they can't get to the tunnels, can't find the tunnels. So whatever tunnel they find, they want to flood it. Mm-hmm. That means they'll kill their hostages. They'll kill whomever they're trying to kill. Once again, eradicate. Mm-hmm. And to garner our, our 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 sympathy once again, you can hear twenty times in one paragraph in one sentence that 
they rape women and children. They use them as human shields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, true or not, this particular uh, evoking sentiment is, you know, is making, again, is, is, is driving a, a wedge between us. So the Jews in this country, now what? Right. You no. Know? Again, you got you got people of all races coming into the country and no one wants them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got Donald Trump talking about the immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country. Yes. Bringing out words of old, old regimes. Mm -hmm. So we're in a bad place. We're in a very bad place. Very bad place. You know, and, and there's no out. There's no foreseeable out. You know, our government has refused to give money to Ukraine. That we don't have it. We don't have it anymore to give. Whatever right. we have. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have, whether it be weapons, whether it be... We don't have any soldiers over there. Mm -mm, we don't. But that president in the midst of a war flew over here to beg <laughs> America. In front, of, in front of Congress. That's right. To beg mm -hmm. for some help. Mm -hmm. And they turned them away with a not unless we get the border. Right. There wasn't a hard no. It was just like, well, not unless we get Joe Biden to take care of the southern border. So we're in a bad place. We hate each other where no one can mm -hmm. stand each other. And uh, there's no foreseeable out. And I don't mean to sound pessimistic. It's just this is what we're left with. Mm -hmm. You know, and we go outside in our local neighborhoods and we're still scared of each other. Mm -hmm. we're scared of our neighbors, let alone a stranger. Right. So, you know, there's no foreseeable out. Mrs. Davis, again, I, I'm sorry to sound pessimistic, but that's the way of the world right now. <laughs> no, and, and you know, as I was listening to you bringing up some other thoughts and everything you said is true it, and it is terrible and horrific and um, troubling to, to see these videos, to see people, older people, shot, killed, beat up. You see parents cradling the dead bodies of their children, whether mm -hmm. they're Palestinian or Jewish. That, you know, anybody we're who's parent, human. we're all we're human. All and so watching it, it, it brings tears to your eyes. But it what, does. one of the things that's been really troubling for me, I've been watching the doctors in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so when um, people were trying to get to the hospitals and they were like, well, we'll go to the hospital for safety because you think that's where you should be safe. And then you had the military who was looking for Hamas who said they were under the hospital. And now we've I had some it. confirmation, right? We've had some confirmation that that is true. And some of the doctors have said, I had to make choices on who to save, who, what child to save. You know, you still have women who are having babies or who've had babies and a baby has died because mm -hmm. they don't have power in the hospital because that child may have needed an ICU unit or something or a hospital or wherever they were was blown up. And so now people have died. There, there was a report a few days ago where I forget what kind of bomb it was, but they said it, it, they dropped it and it destroyed. A dumb bomb. A dumb yes, bomb th is what they call thank, it. Thank you. And it destroyed several city blocks. Like an entire community was just wiped off the face of the earth. I've seen video where Jewish soldiers were recorded on video. And if this is true, and not staged or any of those things that they were saying they were going from house to house and they were using the word, we're rooting them out, we're eradicating them. Mm -hmm. But then on the on the other side, you have Hamas who says, well, you're, you're threatening our way of life, our livelihoods, our land, our culture, who we are, all of these things. And so you're right, Mr. Harp, at some point, Somebody has to say enough is enough. We have to have peace. There was a report and it was troubling because rape is often used as a tool in war. 
to inflict harm and torture and fear. And there was a report that I read that was interesting because it was international news where they were saying that rape was okay to be used in warfare because of the the trials and um, I forget the wording that it was, but it, it was essentially saying because of the burden that you are placing a soldier on, that essentially you turn them into a killing machine, that they become very animalistic, that mm-hmm. it is okay for them to walk into whoever and in what somebody. regime and what in what kind of you know system is this? You know, exactly. you know, Mrs. Davis, there's there's many governments around the world. There's many types of systems. In mm-hmm. fact, we throw these words around. You know, in our national specter, we throw these words around in order to mm-hmm. uh, paint a picture and mm-hmm. say that's what you are. Mm-hmm. You're a fascist. Mm-hmm. You're a Marxist. You're mm-hmm. a this. You're a is that. Mm-hmm. Um, in order to make you the bad person. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, to put a label on you. We have to put a label on and, and, you. Know, and I don't say this flippantly. I mean, I, I say this mm-hmm. in order, uh, you know, politically, a lot of people mm-hmm. will, will, will label you as a socialist if you if you want to feed the hungry. Uh, mm-hmm. Obamacare, the ACA, is now uh, socialism. Mm-hmm. Uh, welfare is socialism. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it has socialist properties, sure, but it's not. We don't. We're not a socialist country, right? Um, we still believe in capitalism, right? 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 So we we share a lot of things, mm-hmm. but I mean that to say that there are, you know, what's going on in Russia. They may do that. They may. Mm-hmm. They may do that over there in the Eastern Bloc. Mm-hmm. We've heard of it before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's unfortunate, and war is ugly, and yes, it's it really, is. really ugly. Um, it's so ugly that people <laughs> don't come back the same. No, they don't. Now, they don't. I would like to flip subject just a little yes, bit. Yes, please, just please. Bit. Um, of course, we're all human and we should be affected by the plights of children who have by no choice of their own get caught up in these wars of adults mm-hmm. and uh, lose their lives. Now, over here in America, we are going through the craziest thing with this Roe versus Wade overturning. Mm-hmm. So now you have all of these different states and all of these different rules of you can't be passed this week and you can't have an abortion and this and you can't leave the state in this particular situation. But we have this one young lady recently who was told by her doctors that this baby will not live. The lady in Texas, yes, I was following her case closely. Mm-hmm. This baby will not live, and then this baby, this baby will cause irreparable damage to the mother. Mm-hmm. Which means she could never baby. have, which means right. she would never be able to have another child, which she right. already had, I think, either two or three. And she said, "I want another baby." So, the state told her that she couldn't have that abortion that mm-hmm. the doctor said she needed. Mm-hmm. So. She left the state. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know. Lo- and the baby died. And, the, and baby the baby died. died. Mm-hmm. The baby died before she got to the point where she was having the abortion. So <laughs> at that point, it became a, 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 a after product. Mm-hmm. Now, and many young mothers who get caught in those situations, let's say they have, and it's a, another another case of a young Black woman who went mm-hmm. through the same situation, mm-hmm. but she uh, miscarried into the toilet. Yes, and now they're charging her. And now they're charging her with crimes of dis- the misdisposing of the corpse. Of a corpse, yes. Which, uh, uh, any, and let me just say this, Ms. Harp, because when, well, when I heard it, when I heard it, I thought, it, okay, so most people understand how babies come out. And so if a woman has to go to the bathroom, more than likely... She was probably already in labor and her body did exactly what it was supposed and, and to do. Push that baby out. Baby out. And the baby went in the toilet. It happens more than what people understand. Now, the baby's dead. I'm not saying because I was a little bit confused because they were making it sound as if she was trying to flush it. I don't know what she was trying to do. And I don't know at what point how many weeks it was. Because if and I and I hate to be crass. But if it was like Jello, where there were no 
bones or we anything. don't know we, we don't, don't know, know. We don't, we don't know. know at what stage this embryo was this and that, what the right. fetus, we don't know. Right. Uh, you know, that's up to conjecture. However, right. she was arrested and charged for this. Yeah. Now, yeah. unfortunately, the, the point I'm trying to make is that we're turning, we're turning our young ladies and our female citizens into martyrs. We are. We're turning them into martyrs for this cause of Roe versus Wade overturning and the victory of it mm -hmm. so what, what you know the, the the female autonomy the doctor's rights and all of these different things that are going on and being misappropriated by our our elected leaders mm -hmm. um, you know it's just making the situation a lot worse in this country again everybody pitted against each other mm -hmm. because we don't know what's next what are they going to overturn next Right. You know, are we going to overturn, uh, you know, 1963 Voting Act? Are we going to overturn? They keep um, gutting it. They keep gutting it. So, you know, at a certain point, it, it won't be worth it. We have no clue. Right. We have no clue. And our voices are not being heard anymore. Exactly. You know, our voices are not being heard anymore. Everyone has one. Everyone has a little device. Right. You know, to, to make your voice known. But, I mean, it... it, it Again, I'm very pessimistic sounding, and uh, my intent is to just hey, I'm just letting it know, be known. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. a horrible situation, you know. Right now, we don't know as we come into this next election cycle, okay? Mm -hmm. And in this next election cycle, we 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 got a whole bunch of surprises coming up. We're already at the holidays. We're already at we're already at Christmas, mm -hmm. and as we move into New Year's. Now the trials begin. Right. Now so, all the hearings, all the trials, all the all the witnesses, all the evidence starts to come out. And mm -hmm. all these now that the Supreme Court has elected to take up the case of whether or not to uh, decide if the former president had immunity. Yes. All these different states now have to decide whether or not he can even be on the ballot. OK, so breaking news. Go ahead and announce it, Mr. Herb. Do you remember? I'm on. I'm on. And we just got <laughs> one state that just said it. That's right. And who is that? State, state of Colorado. That's the right. Rocky Mountain State has just announced the Supreme Court has said that Donald Trump is not eligible to be on the ballot. That's right. And that's the first state. That's the first mm -hmm. out of 50 mm -hmm. to, to solidify that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that's a precedent now. Mm -hmm. Other states who are sitting on the fence can now make their decisions. Other states who will say, well, if they made it, then we have to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm sure you'll get to the governors of Florida, DeSantis, who will yes. say he can't be on the ballot here. Yes. You'll get to the governor yes. of this state, <laughs> he can't be on the ballot here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and I say that with a smile on my face because there is a chink in everybody's arm. Mm -hmm. There's a chink in everybody's arm. And he's playing the court system to the way he can play it right now. I'm talking about Donald Trump. Yeah. And delay, delay, delay. But the time's running out. And so these folks have to answer the bell. Mm -hmm. You know, they either stand over on his side or get out of the corner, get right. out of the way, because it's not going to be pretty. You no. Know? And, uh, you know, thanks for letting me break the breaking news. But uh, you and me both got it at the same time. And uh, I, We hey, did. I, you know, <laughs> it, it puts a smile on my face because that makes me know that, you know, something does work. You it, know, it if he, just a little bit. Right. You know, right. I, I have faith in our institutions. I know many people don't. They are there for a particular reason and a purpose. And as long as we have fair minded, sober thinking people who are not following their own ideology, but are following what the constitution has set forth, what our election protocols and different things are, hopefully we will be okay. I know in Georgia today, the election workers, they filed a suit stating that uh, the former president needs to stop talking about them. He's not allowed to mention them. So that is a suit. But it is also interesting because you brought up DeSantis. So DeSantis is running against former president. You also have Nikki Haley, who's running against a former president. And then we have the gentleman who's 
whose name I'm going to butcher, Vivek Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. Yes, Ramaswamy. Yes. Yes. Oh boy, watch out. Yeah, talk about <laughs> it, Mr. Hart. Okay, well, Nikki Haley. Um, first, let me talk about her. Nikki Haley. Uh, mm -hmm. She's the right woman for the GOP. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, they're, they're ready for a woman. Um, most of them. You know, mm -hmm. you get Donald Trump, you know, we'll see what happens with him. But the country wasn't ready for Hillary Clinton. Um, she got smeared. She'd have been great. Uh, mm -hmm. She got smeared. But they were ready for a woman. They got a black woman as the vice president. So, mm -hmm. you know, another little step forward. Mm -hmm. But here we go. Now you got Nikki Haley running. And in the GOP, she's doing very well in the polls. Um, what's what's uh, helping her is that her competition is just, you know, ridiculous. Yes. Uh, yes. So Ron DeSantis and his battle with Disney, he'll never get away from that. No. Nope. Um, and then this Vivek Ramaswamy. Mm -hmm. And I say be careful about him mm -hmm. because he says all the stuff that Trump says. Yes, he does. He tries to say he tries mm -hmm. to say it in a more palatable way. Exactly. He doesn't come across it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But he directs it to the youth, directs mm -hmm. it to the youth, and all is going to the youth and the youth and the youth and the youth. And, the youth. and we got to be careful what the youth are listening to anyway. Exactly. Okay, because there's so much out here, mm -hmm. and make up their own minds. You know, those who have free minds make up the mind. Mm -hmm. But that guy is dangerous. Oh, very much he, so. He 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 wants to come in and immediately gut and cut and get rid of. Mm -hmm. So again, we're talking this fear of overturning and things. He his whole platform is: I want to get rid of the DOJ. I want to get rid of the IRS. I, and then these are all things that Trump wants to get rid of. Exactly. And a no good taxes, portion of America wants no to get rid of and no justice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially mm -hmm. for the money crimes. Right. You know? So here we go coming in to the youth, to the youth. And he's like, smile. Hey, cool that he looks different than everybody else in this diversity, yeah. equity, and inclusion air era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now he's an immigrant. And he's got to fight through the immigrant thing, too. He and so is immigrants. Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley I, is an immigrant, too. She's Indian American, I believe, Indian American or Indian. Come on. Come on. I, and, nah. and, and, it, and I I just need to say this really Go quick. Go Please say it. <laughs> because I, I, I get frustrated with people who sit there and say one thing, and I'm like, but you are an immigrant. What, what are you talking about? You came through this whole same process because the United States has the immigration oh, wow. policy that it that that it has, but you want to be selfish and not allow anybody else to come over because you're here. The type of people that want over here is the type of people. Now, once again, you know I sound pessimistic, and I apologize to you and your viewers, but here we go. Mm -hmm. He said in his town hall just a week ago from this day. Mm -hmm. that as soon as he becomes president, that he's going to end birthright citizenship. Right. He's going to make sure that nobody can come over here and get born in this country and become a citizen. And I laughed to myself. I'm like, isn't that what you did? did he? Exactly. Exactly. Wasn't that what you took advantage of to even be able to run for president? Right. So now he wants to eliminate anybody to be like him. No, mm -hmm. let me let me let me jump off of that mm -hmm. for a second. The guy's got to be the smartest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. He won't even let you ask the whole question. He's going to answer the question three words into it. Like, I got it. I got it. I understand where you're going. I understand. I understand. Now, let me say mm -hmm. this. Let me say this. But, but, but let me say this. He's mm -hmm. going to cut you off so you can't even ask a question. Right. But this is this is the style of politician. This is the style of person. This is the style of communicator that we have, mm -hmm. you know. We have to, you can be the smartest guy in the room because you got to make everybody else feel dumb. I'm going right. to make you, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how good I am by showing you how bad you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
I don't have any acc accolades or resumes. I'm George Santos. I'm just, I'm just, I just got a Facebook page. <laughs> and I lied about who I am, where I've worked, what I've done, my education, everything. And you bought it. And you bought it. <laughs> well, nobody well, does background checks. Nobody does. I guess your background check is your whole social profile. That's it. Wait, Mr. Hart, who is, I'm, I'm drawing a break. Who is our legislator in Texas? You remember when, um, was it the snowstorm and he fled to Mexico? You know who I'm talking about. He's Cuban. I don't remember that. When, when was oh this? Oh my goodness. This was a few years ago. I can't think of who it is. I, I'm going to have to look it up while we're talking. But it was, was in very... Congress. Was he in Congress? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'll think of it. But Marco it was... Rubio? <laughs> Not Marco Rubio, his his buddy. Ted Cruz. Yes, that's it. Ted Cruz, okay. similar. His family is from Cuba. Uh huh. And I think he was born in Cuba, but immigrated to the United States and became an American citizen. So it becomes one of those things. He can't run for president, so we don't have to worry about that. But it becomes one of those things that when you begin to talk about birthright citizenship, you can look around the country at some of our prominent uh, politicians, leaders, different people, and you start to wonder, oh, well, if we stop birthright citizenship, none of these people would be American. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. I mean, Donald Trump is married to a uh, immigrant. Yes, yes, his that's son right. Is, uh, his Who son brought her family? Person. Right, and she brought her family over. She mm -hmm. brought her parents over. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I guess you know, listen, this it it doesn't work for some. You know? I guess you know doesn't work for some. But it's amazing. It's amazing how you know this is. Once again, this is what we come to. You know? We are. We this are. is what we come to and uh, what we're left with to make our choices of, you know, it's astounding. It and is astounding. Let me, let, me, let me turn it on to the other side because Joe Biden being the incumbent, okay, now there are age issues, mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. There are definitely age issues and cognitive issues. Mm -hmm. What's more uh, disappointing is that there's no one in the in the Democratic Party who's stepping up. Now, it's not about running against Biden uh, to attack his second term, but we don't have any anybody out there who's making right. any noise. Mm -hmm. You know, and the person who wants to run as a Democrat is not is not out for that. He just wants to run and beat everybody, and that's the and that's the Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he just wants to come in and destroy everything on the Democratic side. Right. So. Whether you're a Republican or Democrat, you know, there are choices. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I guess the <laughs> quality of the choices is what, is what differs, is what matters. And, um, you know, it would be great. It would be great to have uh, Joe Biden continue some of the progress that he's been making. You know, economically, we're not doing bad. Gas mm -hmm. has come down. Yes, it has. Gas has come down. We've gone through an inflation because we go through so much. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. It's only three years after COVID. Right. So that, that curve had to hit the bottom. I mean, anybody who's taking any economic <laughs> course is going to know it's got to do that. It goes down. It comes back up. It, it goes, goes down. It comes back up. Comes back like up. a wave. Like a wave. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we just have to do it. And uh, right now, the last thing I'll say is, you know, the big thing coming into 2024 is the wealth gap. You know, the gap between those who have and those who have not. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a big, interesting thing because your boy Rudy Giuliani is about to be a have not. With yes, that $150 million, <laughs> $150 million settlement that they just awarded to Shea Moss and her mother, Ruby Freeman. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a beautiful thing. $150 million, and I hope they get every penny that they can. Because he's so not going to be long here either. <laughs> right, right. I, I was very happy to hear that as well. And I hope they do get every penny. But before we switch over to fitness, yeah. Mr. Harper, I yeah. also wanted to talk about Harvard 
Penn, yes. University of Pennsylvania, and Yale. They had a very, whoo, they've had a rough few weeks. All for the word, word anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. All over the world, word anti-Semitism. The young lady who uh, stepped down, and I believe she was at Princeton. Pennsylvania. Um, University Pennsylvania, of Pennsylvania. Excuse mm -hmm. me. But the University of Penn. Um, she was last on the spot. And her answer was not necessarily wrong, right? Uh uh. But that Elise Stefanik jumped all over her. He jumped all over her and asked and answered all those questions and canceled that young lady from University of Penn. Mm -hmm. Made her a public disgrace and so she stepped down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, she did the right thing to save grace and save face for the school and not bring any further damage to the school, but they canceled her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the Harvard young lady, she wasn't having it. Mm -mm. She wasn't stepping down. She and like, she mm -hmm. said the same. And she said the same thing. She said on this college campus, these students have the the right to, you know, to protest as their rights are. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and anything that rises to the level threats that need to be addressed, we will address it. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to address it until it rises to that level. Right. And that's and that's the answer that every <laughs> every leader should give. Mm -hmm. And we don't address it until it rises to that level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. So I'm glad that she stayed. I am glad. I, I, I am paying attention, watching. Um, she had oh, 600 plus employees at Harvard who signed a petition asking for her to um, stay, giving her a vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. However, there are a couple of big donors there, specifically one, who made some some inflammatory statements that she was a diversity hire, that she has damaged the reputation of Harvard irrevocably, and that she is the worst president ever in oh, all the histories goodness. of the presidents. And I said, oh, you're mad because she's black. black. That's right. right. I said, you... Now, on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. there have been all these studies that have been done in terms of who makes the best CEO. Do you know who tops that list? A black woman. There we go. And I, you know, and it is interesting because black women account for a small minority of leadership, top leadership in the C-suite. And m many of them talk about if you stay, you know, you figured it out, you've made it work for you. But many of them were like, the pressure was too much. Just it was too much and they leave. And so, you know, companies across the United States are having a really hard time trying to attract top notch talent that way. And it's just interesting to see President Gay at Harvard being able to stand up to that intense scrutiny, still hold her head high, be mm -hmm. able to do her job um the right way and you know not you know <laughs> that kind of thing because you know at a certain point you would just sit there and look at somebody you're like you know what if you want this job here you can have it i'm done well, and, and just and get up and walk true. out right that's very true now in the bigger picture you know a couple of years ago it was all about cancel culture cancel culture cancel yeah. culture yeah. and now with these what these folks are doing, canceling. Mm -hmm. Now, what they're doing is they're canceling the, if, you know, if we consider those who go to those schools the top 10%, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're, then they're really taking a blow and sweeping across that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want the, they don't want the Harvard and the Yales and the Princetons mm -hmm. and the Penns, the Dartmouths and the, the what and you don't the want Browns. them anymore. And the Browns right. and the Rutgers. These what we call the Ivy League schools. These schools mm -hmm. produce those mm -hmm. uh, lawyers and, 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 and governors and Congress people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So your next wave of leaders are coming from these schools. Mm -hmm. Your next wave of leaders, they do know what DEI stands for. They do. 
And okay. although Elon Musk wants to get rid of it, because he came on publicly a couple of days ago and said DEI is the worst thing. I know in Florida they have completely banned DEI. Everybody in That's Florida terrible. was fired. Terrible. Right. And I believe in Texas too. Governor Abbott was the same way. He was like, no, we're not doing DEI here. Okay. Now see, DEI today is what equal opportunity was back in the day. That's right. Diversity, so equity, and inclusion and belonging for those that didn't know what that was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, to put mm -hmm. it out all out there. That's the exact word. But that's equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that everybody has an uh, equal chance. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes now that we're in this AI uh, generation where we do mm -hmm. probabilities and ratios and of course, it's going to tell you that percentage-wise, this is what may happen. Percentage-wise, this may happen. And now we don't like it. Right. And now we don't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Davis, it's, you know, again, it's a crazy world we live in. It's like, on you know, six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. And we just at odds. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're at odds and we, we have to make one feel worse. By making the, uh, you know, by make make myself feel good by making the other feel worse, mm -hmm. you know? and uh, I, I pray, you know, I pray, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, you know this this will work out the way it's supposed to. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it is, but uh, right. But while we're going through it, to. right. But while you're going through it, it it is rough. But I want to switch over because it's sure. holiday time, Mr. Hart. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I went, I went out shopping today and I saw people and I was like, oh, excuse me. Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. People were like, oh, happy holidays. You know, and I know we are in this bad state. We are. We're at odds. Politically, we are divided economically we are divided religiously we are divided we can't agree you know everybody wants to have the age-old debate and i'm like okay well do you even believe in god because if you don't <laughs> stop talking about it stop yeah. talking about it go you know let let that go but here we are holiday time yes. and you know many of us have holiday parties to go to Many of us have family functions, all different types of things to do. And we are trying to keep up with our, our fitness. And so I've talked to a few people who've said something interesting to me. They'll say, well, I'm going to a holiday party on Thursday and I know they're going to have all the sweets and treats. And so guess what? I'm not going to eat anything all that day so I can gorge myself on all <laughs> the goodies. <laughs> and I thought... But where is the balance? Because then you throw your fitness off. Mr. Harp, is there a way to look at balancing our fitness and our nutritional needs? And I know sweet potato pie may not be a nutritional <laughs> need, but it's really good and delicious. So is chocolate cheesecake. I'm telling all my favorites. It's um, all right. <laughs> strawberry cheesecake chocolate chip cookie chocolate chip cookie you, you know mm -hmm. sometimes ham <laughs> and macaroni and cheese or seafood you when know you gonna start cooking when hey, you gonna start cooking when you coming over i'm just saying no, I, as as that, as as <laughs> listen mr davis if i may yes, uh, please. Listen, uh, the the biggest thing is enjoy yourself Okay. Yes. This is the holiday. Yes. This is the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Only comes once a year. All mm -hmm. right. We get 30 days between Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, hopefully, hopefully we don't have to get down to the cram session. You know, like I didn't study, I didn't study, and then you try to study the night before. We don't have to do it that way. So right. if you've been doing a little something and keeping a little active throughout the year, this is this this should be nothing. This is enjoy yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as far as eating, we should eat. We should eat meals. We should eat five times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people don't like to hear that big of a number for eating. We don't have to eat five big meals a day, but we should eat five meals a day. So we have breakfast, break and a snack, down. lunch, break and a snack, it. dinner. Okay. 
Can okay. we have a snack after dinner? Then have a snack after dinner. Okay, so that's six okay. times. So now, five to six to times a day. Six, then go ahead and correct me. I love that too. <laughs> <laughs> what my point is, is that the more you eat, the quicker your metabolism. Okay? The more you eat, the more your body works to break that food down. And so that you're not having to gorge, mm -hmm. not eat all day until I get that one big meal. Okay? You shouldn't have to do that. And the more that your body continues to stay in burn mode, burn fuel, burn fat, once it stays in burn mode, you're able to enjoy a little bit more of some of the things that you like. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and not have to worry about whether or not it's putting those pounds on a particular part of your body. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So if we could just change that particular mindset, um, then you know, we can look at it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens overnight. Nothing is right. going to pack up onto your body overnight. Nothing's going to fall off your body overnight. So it's going to take a little time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the more time you put into eating, the more time you're going to pack things onto your body. The more time you put into exercise, the more you're going to take things off of your body. So six on one hand, half a dozen on the other, you get to make a choice. Okay. However, um, my recommendation is eat. Eat more. Mm -hmm. Eat smart. But eat more. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can eat lighter meals, make six of them a day. Again, that snack doesn't have to be a bag of chips. Right. It can be, it can be another cooked meal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, your snack doesn't have to be just uh some candy. It can be a nice small meal. Mm -hmm. Again, five, six meals keeps your metabolism going. Okay. During the holiday season. We also have to worry about keeping our mentals together. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is a, this can be a lonely time of year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some of our children are grown and out of the house. Some of our situations where we don't have our family like we used to mm -hmm. move to another area. There's many different situations where this time of year just doesn't seem to be the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, one of the ways to get through it is exercise. Get, put them headphones on and get to the gym and move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. You'll see some people there. You'll see some friends there that are doing the same thing. And then, hey, how about hang out afterwards? Mm -hmm. Make your own little Christmas little get together. Okay. But those are some of the things that you can do to um, keep your physical and your mental together. And I always. You hear me? I hear you now. Go ahead. Yes. So you got to keep your spiritual life together. Um, this is the season of recognizing the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. And however you celebrate, if you're uh, into the buying of the gifts and uh, celebrating, however you celebrate, do it. Make yourself That's happy. Right. Again, this mm -hmm. is the biggest muscle. And you got to keep yourself happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll get through the we'll get through the holidays, and now we start to make a plan for the new year. Okay, the last mm -hmm. thing I'll say is we make that plan for the new year. Let's break it up into twelve months. You don't have to do it by the three hundred and sixty four days. And how many can I get to the gym? That's a big number in your head. Mm -hmm. Break it down into twelve months, and say what would you like to do this month? Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to work on your legs, go ahead, work on your legs this month. Okay. You want to work, you know, throw some other body parts in there. But next month, let's go ahead and let's work on our arms. Mm -hmm. Next month, we'll concentrate on our shoulders, our back, our chest, different parts of our bodies. Invest in a class. Take a fitness class. If your gym offers fitness classes, take a yoga class and stretch. Mm -hmm. If it has a pool, take advantage of the pool. Swim, walk, run, move around. If it has... If your gym has a steam room and a hot tub, then please go in there and relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. It'll help you for when you're not inside the gym. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the things I try to reiterate is just to keep moving. The more you move, the better you feel. Okay? Walk mm -hmm. the dog, run with those kids, play with those grandkids. 
get out there. You, mm -hmm. If you have the means to join a bowling team, join that bowling league. Just get out there and move a little bit. You'll be a little more social. All right. It'll help you up here and keep some of those emotions, keep some of those emotions down while we're going through the holidays. As well as increase our physical fitness and those muscles. And, and if we eat right, you'll be amazed at how much we can smile, even in this yeah. pessimistic <laughs> world we live Absolutely. in. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, you will. <laughs> well, you'll you'll definitely get a much better outlook. And uh hey, people will notice. Mm -hmm. People will notice and people will say, What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? They may even not walk up to you, but they'll talk from afar and they'll say something, something about that person over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. And all you have to do is move around, move around and eat a little bit. And then you'll be amazed at how some of the progress you'll make. Absolutely. Those are, are some really great tips. I want to go back to something you said, Mr. Hart, because part of my um, health transformation is trying to get myself healthy. And so I have adopted, I eat a salad with every meal. And so I call it my foundation food. My foundation is spinach, cherry tomatoes, cantaloupe, mm -hmm. strawberries, or blueberries. But uh -huh. it's spinach, spinach and cherry tomatoes at every meal. So when I have my scrambled eggs or my spinach and cheese omelet or... Uh, boiled eggs or poached eggs. I have a little bit of spinach on my plate. That's mm -hmm. that's my vegetable that gives me some um, good protein that comes out of that spinach. My uh -huh. eggs are protein. Then I will have, you know, if I have cantaloupe, strawberry, or blueberries, that's my carb. Mm -hmm. If I've got uh, cheese cubes, or sliced cheese, or even just sprinkled cheese across my eggs or whatever. That's my fat. That's a great meal. I like the fat. And the reason why I said, can we have a snack after dinner? Because one of the things for so many of us around the world, it depends on what your work schedule is. If you're getting up at five or six in the morning, and if you're like me and you don't eat dinner until seven or eight, because your schedule is just ridiculously crazy because you have kids who have basketball and everything else. That's a long time. And if you tell me, oh, you can only eat five times and I'm supposed to eat at like five o'clock, I'm like, I can't eat at five o'clock. I'm I'm driving or I'm shooting the show or or something. And so that's why I asked you about afterwards, could we have a snack after dinner? Oh, definitely. Listen, I, I, I'll take it one step further. Again, small meals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're on the go, keep some things with you. Mm -hmm. Protein bars. Mm -hmm. Some of those uh protein drinks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we don't have to go overboard and you can get into the, you know, break the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, but you uh you can definitely um those type of in between snacks. Mm -hmm. Now I'd recommend that you eat a meal as far as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes. Right. Uh, again, I know a lot of us are busy and the, the clock seems to be our enemy when it comes down to trying mm -hmm. to schedule a meal, especially when you got a family to feed. Right. Um, but a meal can be but, an apple. It could be well, a, it, it could a, a, a snack is an apple. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's your in between. That's not your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. A snack is an apple, but yeah. listen, when I say a meal, um, you want to take care of yourself. Don't just want to throw things into your mouth, into your stomach, just to say I ate something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. to, yes, you ate a burger, you know, from the drive-thru. It's not the most nutritious thing. Yes, mm -hmm. you ate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you want to do is you definitely want to take care of yourself. So you do want to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, apple is definitely healthy. Uh, that fiber mm -hmm. that you get from an apple, is, you're going to need that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But once again, you know, that is more of a snack, not a meal. Mm -hmm. It works great in your six times eating of the day. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say make that meal number one or meal number three and then right. meal number five. You know, I would say keep it at the in-between. So if you were to break it down, mm -hmm. let's say you did a breakfast at 7 a.m. 
Mm-hmm. You want to do about a snack at about 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you want to eat your lunch about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Do another snack about 3, 30. Mm-hmm. You're going to eat dinner about 6. Yeah. Take another snack around 8 because most people hopefully are going to bed to get 8 hours of sleep around 10, 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And that okay. is and that is my schedule, Mr. Hart. What you what you just said. And so, so if I, you can eat, if you can eat in those intervals, your mm-hmm. body is constantly breaking things down. Right. You don't have to eat a lot. Mm-hmm. Just eat. You know, you're eating healthy, mm-hmm. but your body is constantly in burn mode, and now it's giving you the fuel to give you the energy, place the nutrients where they need to go, and you'll be amazed. You'll you'll Absolutely. sleep better. Yeah. You'll move better. Mm-hmm. Um, Things fall into place. They okay? do. They do. I carry almonds, granola. I drink water all day long. I have my coffee, but I drink water all day long. I read a uh, suggested that everyone should drink half their body weight in water. Helps keep your body flush. It'll keep you out of everybody else's business because you'll be too busy in the bathroom. You won't have time. Listen, <laughs> water is a necessity. Yes, okay. it is. Water is a necessity. A lot of people skip it and just drink liquid. Yeah. Okay. But water is a necessity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all of us know what happens when our body doesn't get enough water. That's you right. Know? So water is a necessity. You know, continue to drink it. You know, you can combine your other things. Um, I would say lay off as much sugar as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, however, um, drink water. Water yeah. is the best. Is the best flush. It's the best. Uh, it's the best gasoline that you could put inside your body. <laughs> yes, it is. The other thing that I learned from my um, health transformation is that when you're so, it is interesting, and I've had this conversation with a few people. You know, in America, we like to eat until we pass out. We call it itis. We, you know, mm-hmm. you've eaten so much, you're like, oh, I'm so full, I'm stuffed. And then you go sit on the couch and you go to sleep. And, you know, we just sort of think, back. yep, you just lay back, <laughs> you, pass, you literally pass out. And the reason that that happens is because your body is so full of food that it has to shut everything else down so it can digest the food, which is not healthy for us. So I have learned to slow my eating down, be very intentional in what I eat and enjoy my meal, you know, they tell you you should chew really small bites, you should chew slowly. And that wasn't always the easiest thing for me because I was always rushing from one place to another in America. You know, we don't have uh the time that other countries put in for long lunches and things like that. But I have learned that I can get fuller when I enjoy my food versus just, you know, guzzling it down. And so now if my body is too full of food i'm like oh this is uncomfortable i don't like this feeling i'm like i need to go for a walk which was bringing me back to the fitness part of it that instead of passing out on the couch go for a walk how is that for advice mr hart well i mean there's lots of ways to try to come out of that itis Mm -hmm. one of the reasons one of the best ways is not get into it that's Um, right but if you do here's one here's one general Mm-hmm. general um, rule we should go by. All right? The more you feed yourself, yes, your body's going to shut down because it now has to digest all that food. Mm-hmm. And you can't do much while your body is to, uh, has to do all of that mm-hmm. <laughs> to digest that food. Mm-hmm. Now, falling asleep, hey, that's going to allow your body to do, it, do its job while you're not moving. Right. Okay? That is That is one way. Now, of course, there's other, you know, there's many opinions about chewing your food and how many times in order to enjoy it and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the better ways to do it is to portion your plate. Yes. Don't eat with your eyes. Mm-hmm. Eat with your mouth. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people eat with their eyes. They see the colors. They see this. Let me get all of this that I can. Mm-hmm. Well, they do. You know, and portion yourself mm-hmm. you, know? you shouldn't eat more than a, a fist mm-hmm. shouldn't have anything more than your fist mm-hmm. so um you don't have to 
have your whole plate covered. Right. You know? And if that's if that's a thing, use smaller plates. Mm-hmm. So when you cover the whole plate, now it's smaller portions. Right. Listen, there's there's, there's ways we have to trick ourselves because we are we we're creatures of habit. Mm-hmm. And we do it because that's what we do. And we right. do it because that's what we always did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so to make the necessary changes or to get the necessary effects, you have to make the necessary changes. Yes. And one of those things is smaller portions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Better quality of food. Mm-hmm. And eating smart, mm-hmm. eating correctly, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not waiting until, oh, I haven't eaten yet and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. No, your body's going to be on shutdown mode. It starts to eat itself mm-hmm. because your body is always on burn mode and it has to do something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we get dehydrated because right. your body now has now tried to suck up all the water in your system because you need to replenish water. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're the, the, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to eat. Just bring it down some. Okay? Um, and move. And move. And move. Mm-hmm. Eat and move. The more you move, the better you eat, the, the, the better you'll be. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's a perfect way to end our podcast, Mr. Hurt. Before we get out of here, tell us how we can find you on social media and tell us how we can reach you. All right. Eric Harp, Eric Harp 9 at gmail.com, also known as ESQ360 on all your social platforms. Thank you, Mr. Hart, for being here. We can't wait to see you in 2024. This is December 2023. I want to wish you and your family a wonderful, happy holiday and a happy and prosperous new year. Same to you and the Davis family. I'll talk to you real soon. Tell everybody I said hi. I will. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you'll join us on our next episode. You know that you can find me everywhere on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, Snapchat, TikTok, everywhere is Kimberly Bachelor Davis. Bachelor is spelled B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R, no hyphen Davis. You can listen to this show on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, and Wisdom. You can see this show at youtube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis. You can learn more about me as an author at kimbdavis.com. Thank you again for tuning in. And as always, remember, be magnificent.